Hey data fans, Reed here. Today, I want to show you a useful way to utilize the waterfall visual by giving you the ability to select the two comparisons you'd like to see between the values breakdown like you see here, giving the end users more flexibility to slice and dice the data for greater insights. Now to me, this is an improvement from the basic waterfall and certainly gives more degrees of freedom for analysis for the end user. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. To start the conversation, let's look at a basic waterfall chart. What I have up here is a waterfall chart that is breaking down the sales from 2022 and the sales in 2023, which is what I have in the category well over here. And I'm doing a breakdown for a product category, which allows me to see the difference between 9.6 and 11.8, which was an increase of last year. Where did that increase or decrease happen? As we can see, home appliances, camcorders, cell phones, all the way up until games and toys, those actually had sales increases, but we also lost some sales amount in audio, video, and computers. So the breakdown is actually a great way to see that between these two amounts that we have, whether or not they're greater or lower, where did the positives and negatives occur to be able to just see that. And we can also even hover over and get some of the percentage deltas and the sales changes that we have between the two years. So it is really nice to be able to have this extra information based off of simply what we've placed as categories and breakdowns in these wells and as well in the values and tooltips wells. Now the trick to get this to be dynamic as well where the dates will change. And right now I have 2022 and 23. This is just some demonstration data, but let's just consider this to be prior and current year. Now, if I come over to the filters pane, what we can use in this case for years is something called a year offset, which just basically determines whether or not we are in a current, prior, or future. And I've just filtered it to the year offset, in this case, one year forward and two years forward. But that means that it will always shift. Whenever we go to the next year, it will still show the next year and then the next next year each time. So it is a relative date filter that I'm applying to make sure that I'm always only showing two categories and it is whatever offset that I've selected it to. And as I mentioned, I just wanted to start simple just to give you an idea of what category A and B are like with a comparison breakdown between the two of them. But as you know, I like to do things fun and get a little fancy with them. So I'm going to show you a way to actually provide some options to actually toggle a few other stuff and a little bit of formatting magic that we can sprinkle in here. So now let's come to the slicer comparison page. And what I've done is I've actually built a slicer here at the top. If I select this here, this is actually just simply selecting the country that I have from my sales table. It could also be from your dimension table if you actually had a more built out model, which it should be. But overall, I basically just have a selection up here. Now I have two things selected, Australia and Canada. Notice that Canada and Australia are down here at the bottom. And if I was to select a third value in here, you'll actually see that it blanks out and a description in the title is now asking to select only two comparison values. So let me get rid of Australia and Canada, and I'm gonna select Germany. So you'll see that the data renders in the report only when I have two values selected, and those become the two end-to-end -end comparisons. Now, because this is sorted most to least, you're always gonna have the larger comparison on the left with the positives going down to the negative with the smaller one, but you have the freedom to be able to compare to any of these that you have in the data set that you have in the slicer at the top. I'm gonna to go back and select France again, and then I will show you exactly what is in this visual in here. So you notice that I have a measure called sales waterfall value. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up go to my folder with my waterfall measures, and let's go ahead and enlarge this so you can view it. Now you'll notice at the top I have a variable called country count. That is simply counting in here from the selected countries at the top, whether or not there is going to be two countries selected or not. So it's just simply counting the number of unique values that I have in here. And what I'm doing in the result is if the country count is equal to two, so exactly two, then it returns sales, otherwise blank. That is how when I do three or more, it goes blank, or if I do one or less, it also returns blank. Select Germany again. Now that's how I created the measure to make sure that it basically blanks out whenever I had any additional categories. Now three or more will show in the waterfall chart, but I wanted this to specifically just be a comparison of two categories at any time. So now the last thing that I also did for this page is when I unselect that, it says select only two comparison values. So as well at the top, I have a title in my format pane. If I come to title down here, notice the f of x symbol, and that is indicating that there is a sales waterfall title in the field value that is populating this title. So I'm going to expand my fields list out a little bit, waterfall title, same thing, there's a country count in here. So if the country count is equal to two, it returns the original title. Otherwise, it asks the users, please select only two comparison values. Now, I was pretty happy with this result, but you know, I still thought that, hey, you know, I, I don't need the axis to show up and I don't need the grid lines to show up. I wanted it to be just a little bit cleaner. So now I'm gonna to go to page three, report formatting, 
And here's one where I added a few more formatting tweaks. Now watch, if I unselect Germany, I've now completely blanked out the canvas with nothing left but a title to ask for please select only two comparison values. So what I've done in here under the format painter, if I go to this visual, go to the format painter again, and if I check under the Y axis, there's a couple of things in here that you'll notice. The color for the actual axis itself has a measure that's being populated into here because I have two additional calculations for the DAX measures over here. There's one for the waterfall Y axis and one for the grid lines. The Y axis essentially returns white or dark gray for the font and then the grid lines either returns white or light gray. So that's how both of them disappear because I am populating in both of these spots in here a measure that simply changes the color. So now I've completely cleaned the canvas out when I am not selecting just two values because I wanted to have it really clean and crisp for this user experience. And that's about as far as I'll get for today's video in the demonstration. The goal of this was to show you just a waterfall how it can be used as a great comparison for category A and B with a breakdown in between from a basic perspective to understand it. Also how to actually have a slicer that can allow you to choose between those values, but basically have it clear out unless there is only ever two categories selected to be able to compare against. And there's one more thing that I want to show you because this is actually going to be a two part video because there's a bunch of other cool stuff that I did. So before we exit for the day, let me go ahead and show you that last little piece. The last but not least, I'll come down to multiple comparison down here. And notice that we have our original country comparison. That still works as expected. If I do not have two values selected, it blanks out the visual. However, notice that there are two other slicers that are at the top here. We have a breakdown selection, and that's actually letting me choose between category or color or company. So I'm actually changing the breakdown and whatever I want to compare against. So already a huge value add there. And to take it one step even further, you know what? I didn't really like that the auto axis does not start at zero because sometimes people might argue that, you know, that's not a fair comparison. So I wanted to bake in something where I can choose between dynamic, which is the default, or I can do an axis that starts as zero. And yeah, it does squish it down, but at least to give you a comparison of where the actual variances are in size compared to whatever the original value might be. So again, we have a Y axis type of dynamic and zero, and we can also choose the breakdown selection, and that will be coming in our next video. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel, or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.